from JK Fiber Arts. Today we are going to spin this really beautiful uh, Jacob uh, talk that I got from my uh, Into the World Fiber of the Month Club. Uh, yesterday was cool and crisp and today was chilly and rainy. I really had fall on the mind and uh, I thought, oh, this looks amazing. Kind of like a fall campfire with the leaves changing. Uh, this is, a, it goes from like a very dark, dark blue to brown in here. And then you have, of course, the fiery uh, red, orange, and um, the, the brown of the uh, leaves changing colors. Uh, so I wanna open this up and uh, see what we have and decide what I wanna do with this. And I know I just did a fractal spin, but these uh, type of top, especially the Into the World, because I think my other one, uh, was my other one? No, my other one was Jakira Farms, sorry the most recent one, uh, but the uh, Into the World also tends to lend itself to a beautiful fractal spin. And I'm thinking a beautiful fractal campfire type spin. Um, I always am excited to do the uh, fractal until I have to divide into ninths and then I'm losing my mind. <laughs> um, but let's look at this. Uh, so here we have it. And, uh, and I have two of these. Uh, so I have about eight ounces of fiber. I feel like I would like to three-ply this. I don't have a particular project in mind, but I think it would be awesome for uh, mittens and a hat. And I kind of like the uh, more outdoorsy manly colors, so maybe a nice hat and some uh, fingerless gloves for my husband. So uh, Jacob wears really well. This is top. I believe that I have plenty to do that. And I think I'm gonna three ply it uh, so that it'll be you know, a good hard wearing um, outerwear. Uh, so next is what are we gonna do with this? So if I want to three ply, I was just looking at these uh, and I have two uh, separate uh, roughly four ounce top of the Jacob. Uh, and these are not even close to being the same or repeatable. This doesn't have quite as much of the red and gold, has a little more of the dark, um, comparatively speaking to this. So they are truly, totally different, um, which is awesome, uh, which makes it interesting. Uh, so I don't think it's gonna matter where I break this off and how I spin it. So I think what I'm gonna do uh, is just divide it into thirds and that's that. I'm gonna call it good. I think it's gonna look really cool. Uh, if you remember the last video, we talked about color pooling and because these are so different and I'm not gonna pay attention to which end I spin, I'm not spinning them end to end or anything like that. I think that this is all gonna blend together nicely um, without being muddy. These colors are gonna be great together. I mean, look at that. That's gonna be super duper awesome sauce. And we're gonna have this beautiful transitioning through all there. Oh, it's gonna look great. All right. so. Let's get this going. Uh, so what did I say we had here? It was uh, oh, 118 and 118 is 236, 236 divided by three, 36. So what is that, like 70 something, 78? Oh, hold on, I gotta stop and check my math. All right, so my mind is not total pudding yet. It was 78-ish, it's like 78 and a third, two thirds. Yeah, 78 and two thirds. All right, so we are ready. I'm gonna start spinning these singles and then we'll ply, three ply them and boom, gonna be awesome. Good morning. We are ready to spin this uh, Jacob single. As you can see, I've started without you because I couldn't wait. Uh, <laughs> I'm impatient that way sometimes. Uh, but uh, the other thing I wanted to mention before I got started was uh, somebody had a really good comment. Um, I had talked about my spinning slippers and I realized that uh, I never made any video about this because uh, I made these so long ago, it was before I had started doing YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, these are my spinning slippers. Uh, these are from my hand spun and I felted them and there's a great pattern for this. And one of the uh, comments from my uh, Ireland haul video was, hey, show us how you make those. And so I think what I'll do is one of the, uh, like a maybe a YouTube spin-along thing or something where uh, I will, uh, will spin 
the uh, wool and make the yarn and then we'll knit them up and felt them and I can show you my process for felting too and I will show you too how I molded them because you can see that they look distinctly different for right and left feet and, um, and I did mold them that way on purpose. Uh, so um, I'm going to put them on kind of like Mr. Rogers Neighborhood here and we'll get started. Oh, the other thing, I don't even think you can see this, is this is the socks that I just finished um, from my uh, spin along with my Canadian friend at uh, Lily Dog Designs and uh, I love them. Uh, this is my hand dyed, hand spun and I made a video, don't kill me for this one, uh, I videoed the whole thing as we went along, the dyeing, the spinning, the knitting of the sock. And I had too much, uh, I used up all my memory and saved in all my YouTube videos. So I had to go through and delete and I accidentally permanently deleted the entire thing. So I have, all I have is the, uh, I have like a picture of the final die and I have a picture of me talking about dividing for the sock and that's it. I have some photographs um, because I keep all my photos but I don't keep all my videos. So unfortunately I can't show you how I made these but I love them. And, uh, and I will do a little video to show you the difference because I did the toe on this with uh, some leftover chain ply and that's a whole nother video, but I'll talk to you about that. So now back to Mr. Rogers here and spinning our uh, Jacob fleece. So this fleece uh, is wonderful and I want to do three ply and my plan is to do some sort of outerwear with this. Uh, and um, what I have been doing is around a 32, uh, and I'd like to get somewhere between a worsted weight and um, uh, maybe a, a thick worsted to a, a light Aran. Um, I think the worsted will be good. So the Jacob wool, uh, so I'm just gonna start spinning while we chat here and I'm gonna finish up. I'm almost done with the uh, first single here. Um, so with the uh, Jacob wool, uh, it is a, a breed from the UK. Uh, it is a piebald sheep. And I learned something new about piebald because I always thought that they were um, white sheep with dark spots because I was just never really looked into it before. But I was doing a little bit of research about this breed since I haven't spun Jacob before. Uh, and uh, piebald is a dark colored sheep with white spots. Uh, so they're areas of hypopigmented. Uh, so they'll have black or kind of like a gray black uh, spots that are very well defined uh, and then the hypo pigmented areas which are the with white areas and uh, and that is what piebald means and I learned something new. Uh, so the uh, Jacob uh, fleece, uh, this is a multi-purpose uh, sheep they can use it for meat and for fiber. Uh, the um, stable length is usually around three to six inches it's really, really easy, easy, easy to spin. It is very open and airy. I don't know if you can appreciate that here, but it's just, it is very open and airy. And uh, it has a, just enough luster to make it look fancy. Uh, the uh, microns on it, it's, it's a medium to maybe a, a heavy medium uh, microns. Uh, it's around 32 to 36 microns. So I wouldn't say it's next to skin soft. I would say that it is um, for outerwear. Uh, it's very uh, sturdy wearing, very good wearing. Uh, what else can I say about Jacob? Um, I'm trying to think what else I know about it. <laughs> Not much. Oh, it's multi-horned. Yeah, so you know, if you ever see the, it has, you know, they can have four horns or six horns or five horns. Uh, so that looks pretty cool. I did see them at Sheep and Wool and I had never seen one up close before and I thought, oh, that's really neat. Um, it is a dream to spin. I think it would be great wool for a beginner to try because of the staple length. It does not require as much uh, twist. Uh, you can see that I have my wheel, let me stop for a second here so you can see, I have my wheel set on my larger whorl, um, and you can see how loose this is, it's practically not even in contact, uh, and I have my um, tension super low, and uh, this on the big, and I'm just spinning at my, my default speed, uh, and I have found that that is giving me a nice consistent 32. Um, I'll switch around to the back here in just a minute and you can see, you know, we can do the plyback tests, etc, etc. But um, I think that uh, this is just a lovely, lovely spin. 
I'm gonna get all three, uh, and since it's eight ounces, it's taken me a little while, that's why I got started. I'm much faster if I'm not videoing. <laughs> uh, so uh, I wanna try to get this done so we can be plying this uh, by next weekend's video. All right, so we're gonna get this last little bit here onto the bobbin. And we'll do a little ply back test. I uh, don't know where my lap blanket is. I can't find it. <laughs> I think it's upstairs. I was plying some fuzzy stuff and I didn't want it in my clothes. Um, I'll have to go look for it. So hopefully you'll be able to see everything we're doing here without a black or white background. Yeah, we'll just stop here and see what we got. So this is nice. It's a 32, maybe a little bit bigger than a 32. Just a teensy weensy bit. Let's see, we gotta move this. And let's do our ply back here. There we go. So that's what I'm looking at right here. Looks pretty good, I like it. I like it a lot. So this is the uh, what we're going for. And I am going to uh, keep spinning this single up and then we'll go ahead and uh, do the uh, three ply. I'll let you stick with me here till I finish this bobbin. Uh, I'm doing mostly, I'm trying to do a short forward draw. I think I'm getting thick enough now onto this bobbin that I'm gonna need to tighten up my draw a little bit. There we go. And that little bit of increased draw now because my bobbin's getting a little heavy, it's starting to bog down a bit. This is gonna be great. And when it's all plied, um, my, uh, it's gonna be kind of, um, I think, fractal-like looking because of how uh, random the fiber was dyed. It looks really cool. I'm imagining, uh, you know, when I when I spin this and as I'm, uh, I can almost smell like burning leaves in the fall air and you know, like bonfires and falling leaves. And I just love this color. Uh, that is something about the Jacob wool. It takes up the dye beautifully. Um, there is something that you can have a little bit of in this breed. Uh, so you want to be aware that you're, you want to get a, a good quality uh, Jacob. Uh, they can have uh, some Kemp in them. Kemp is a little bit of a dual coat, uh, except uh, not, a, not a nice dual coat. It, it is undesirable in this sheep. Uh, the Kemp is a very coarse, brittle, hollow fiber, so it won't take up the dye. So if it's mixed in with the uh, good stuff here, uh, it won't take up the dye very well, and you'll have you know, uh, fiber that's breaking. All right, let's do a little bobbin check in here. I'll finish this little nub and then we'll uh, three ply. Look at that. That is so pretty. And that doesn't even have like the really deep midnight portion in here, uh, but I love it. It looks really good. You can see it's got the halo, a little bit of fuzz to it. This is gonna make some great warm, uh, light uh, outerwear. I'm excited now. I gotta figure out what I wanna make with this. Wind this last little bit on there, and then we'll switch it up. All right, so we are off and going for the next one here, and you don't need to sit here and watch all this. I will be back uh, with the uh, three plying. Uh, well, for you, it'll be just a sec. Here we are, ready to three ply. Uh, I love the way this is looking. Oh, it's so pretty. Let's see what it looks like when we get it plied together. It's been a while since I have plied with this wheel. Let's see how uh, I've been uh, doing a lot with my EEW6. Let's see how my draw is here. A little more draw, there we go. Let's check our angle apply. This is a good place to check. Let's see. No, 
20, 25. I could probably put a little more twist in this if we want to do 30. Let's see. A little, another treadle or two more here. And that's 30. Boom. Okay. So I just need a little extra treadling here. Oh, I haven't spun on this wheel in a while. I might need some oil. Get a little squeak capping in. So just the uh, same rules apply as always. Uh, I'm holding my fibers as uh, close to parallel as I can get them with my uh, fingers here. I am moving the whole unit together into the orifice. Um, you know, both, both my hands, I'm trying to move forward. Sometimes I get a little lazy and I just pull straight through. Um, this yarn, I can get away with that because this yarn has a longer staple. It's, it's coarser. If this was Merino. If I do this, if you do that to push forward and it's slippery, you can actually slide the fiber and twist it up. And that, when I have that kind of a yarn, I move my whole hands forward so I don't have that problem. But I can, uh, for this one, I don't have to worry about that. I love these fall colors. Uh, yeah, we're starting to get into the nice fall weather, my favorite time of year. And you can see here I have three. D nah. Now I let my twist travel up. <laughs> Let's try that again. I wanted to bring this up separating these. Let's see if I can make it happen. There we go. That's pretty good. So you can see that we have three different colors here. Uh, and that's uh, because of the way I divided my uh, singles so that uh, I would get a little more uh, blending of the colors. But uh, it is really beautiful. And um, I'm going to make some sort of outerwear with this. I might weave it, actually. It would be really good for weaving. I may have gotten a little carried away with my twist here. A little bit. Take a little bit of that out. And to take it out, I just rub my finger over it and just let the twist travel back. And you saw how much it was twisting before, and now it's twisting with this nice open loop at the bottom. And I actually like this much better. The other thing that I'd like to check here is um, just a, a little um, check on how thick my yarn is. I think this is going to give us um, the nine that we want. So this is going to be right around a, a three ply worsted weight. This is probably going to end up being a two bobbins. This was eight ounces and um, I'm going to end up uh, probably not being able to fit it all on here, but um, maybe I'll, I'll stop at a reasonable distance here and have two sort of equal size uh, skeins of yarn for a change. <laughs> Keep going on this and uh, we'll do a little bobbin check-in and uh, we shall see uh, how this uh, turns out at the end. Here is our bobbin check-in and it's looking awesome. I love this. It is just turning out so beautiful. Here we are, hot off the Nitty Naughty. Uh, I actually did this really late last night or technically early this morning. Uh, and uh, so I did not show you the uh, Nitty Naughty part, which is my favorite part. I enjoyed it, but sadly you did not. Uh, <laughs> so uh, here, oh, this is beautiful. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I did not want the large, uh, sections of um, color repeats to be just solid. Um, I didn't want um, the stripe and I, I did a little chain ply at the end to show you what it could have looked like and the difference in the yarns. Um, but I love the way this uh, blends together and it's not a fractal spin. I just spun them from uh, different ends. I just broke it into thirds and um, I made sure that I spun um, the one uh, dark end first and the other ones, the um, orange ends first. And I love it. So let's get this into soak and you'll be able to see it a little better. Uh, and then here is just this little nubbin here that I did uh, is some chain ply. And you can see how vastly different it is. Uh, and then once I get it, um, the twist set and everything, we'll open it up and we'll compare everything. But uh, it's a good little sample there. 
Here is the final yarn. I'm going to get this opened up to show you here. I really love this. Uh, this uh, Jacob uh, wool spun up great. Uh, so you can hear all the kids playing in our backyard. It's so awesome. I love hearing them play. Uh, so um, let's open this up. I ended up with a, a worsted weight. And here we have it. And I love the way this is sort of transitioning uh, colors through the background. That's one of my favorite ways to spin is when you have like a longer section of color, but the other color kind of transitions through and you get this really cool kind of a fade with a very subtle background stripe. One of my favorites. So this looks amazing. And I wanted to show you um, the difference here. I have this little piece of chain ply that I did and I just whipped this out really quick. I did not, not my best work. We're not looking at this for quality technique here. Uh, <laughs> but um, I just wanted you to see uh, the difference. I mean, same yarn, same, same colors, but when you chain ply it, it just kept it in big sections of uh, color repeat. So this would give you a, a bold striping pattern when you knit it up. Uh, and uh, there's very little in the way of the barber pulling, which um, a lot of people really, really like this. I just don't want everything I knit to be bold striped. That's all. Um, nothing wrong with doing it this way. Uh, in fact, it might be cool if, because I had eight ounces, and this is a technique I like, you spin, you know, three quarters of it like this, and then the rest of it you chain ply, and then you can use this as an accent. So, because it's the same weight yarn, it's all worsted weight. So, uh, anyways, there it is. Uh, but um, just the difference between uh, muddling the colors with... Uh, three ply versus uh, doing a, a chain ply with the, the single. Very dramatic difference in the yarn you'll see. So here you have it, three ply, worsted weight, beautifully dyed uh, Jacob wool from Into the World and a uh, lovely contrast between the uh, uh, barber pulling uh, three ply and the uh, chain ply here. I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, see you next time. Until then, spin happy.